Hello and welcome to TMP Broadcast. My name is Joe Fulford and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about our Streamstar webcast case. Streamstar have come up with this all-in-one production system. It comes in this handy case here. Um, this is a ruggedized computer case, basically, with a touchscreen panel on the front. Um, once, once packed up, this is small enough to fit in hand luggage on an aeroplane, providing you have the correct weight limits. Um, and it allows you to insert four SDI inputs uh, in full HD um, and switch between the four. You can also have a separate DVI input, which today I'm using for demonstration purposes, but can be used for graphic overlays. Um, and it offers something which not a lot else will offer for the same price at least, uh, which is slow motion replay. Uh, it's very easy to operate and the whole idea of it is that one person can operate an entire production with graphics, slow motion replays, switching uh, and playlists all by themselves. This is divided into three sections. The middle section here is our switching section. So I can switch between different cameras. Today I have three cameras, the fourth one I haven't plugged in yet, but it just gives you this overlay. So if <coughs> So that's the middle section here, cam 1, cam 2, cam 3. It also works as a bit of a multi-view monitor as well. Um, so that's simple switching. We go up to the top section here, you've got some other options as well. You've got at the top here, uh, transitions and crossfades. So uh, you're able to crossfade between things, between inputs. Obviously direct cut, which is what we haven't had it on before. And we've got transitions as well allow you to have all of those funky things. These can be edited as well, uh, quite simply, in just program files. You can change the duration of the crossfades. If you want to have it a little bit longer, you can take it down to 100 milliseconds so it's ultra quick. And it does the same with the crossfades as well. We'll leave it on direct cut for now because that's more or less what everybody's going to be using. Now, also in the top section, in the top left here, you can see the three inserts and overlays. Um, the first of which is the logo insert, which allows you to put the logo on top. And let me just check, double check that I've got my logos enabled. Yep, that's right. Here we can see you select the file that you want to insert. And it will insert it on the top of whatever image you have. Now up here in the top left hand corner of the screen we have the three insert inputs. First one is the logo input and if I put that in we've got our lovely little TMP bar along the bottom. Um, obviously that can be changed for bugs uh, and that will take any uh, PNG or FLV uh, file as long as it's the right ratio and it fits in with a transparency in the background. So if you were to create an animated bug or something like that you would just be able to insert in it would animate on. Uh, over the top of whatever other camera input or the DVI input, which I'm going to show you next. The DVI input here, let me just switch that logo off. The DVI input here, at the moment I have a duplicated copy of the screen coming out from, uh, from over here. I've got the HDMI output from here going into the DVI input of the screen. So that allows me to basically show you what's going on on the screen here in a little bit more detail. Um, but that can be used for uh, any sort of input from an external computer. If you were to have a computer next to you with somebody else operating it, creating FLV files or um, a PNG with a, with, a, with a green background, say, then you would be able to chroma key out the background. So if you were to have if you were to have somebody operating an external computer, like a laptop or something, they could generate um, other files like FLV files or they could create um, PNGs or whatever, make videos or any sort of uh, picture or video and you can chroma key out the background using the, the DVI input section here that allows you to select the colour that you can key out for the DVI input which means that somebody could easily be creating videos and other media with, with um, the chroma coloured background and that would be able to insert on top of any other media. 
for the camera input. Um, the third overlay here, the third overlay here is uh, just another overlay exactly the same as the logo overlay. At the moment here we've got our big TMP logo. Also this could be an FRV uh, or a JPEG. Uh, it could be an FRV or it could be a uh, PNG with a transparency in the background, exactly the same as the logo. You can insert both at the same time and you can insert them you can insert the logos on top of the DVIs and the DVI goes over the top of the overlay, so that's the order they go in. Now, the interesting part is at the bottom. First of all, we have the media directory. Um, you can select any folder from within the computer's hard drives or an external hard drive if you want. Um, you populate this list of media files and these could be any video format that's able to play on the regular Windows machine um, within reason. So if you put these in and they'll go in over the top, some of them have audio, some of them don't have audio. Um, and you can set these you can set these to loop or just play through. Uh, and you can change the order in which they appear here. Also here we have the playlist menu at the bottom here. Just at the bottom here we have the playlist menu. And this allows you to create playlists from, from the same directory. You'll be able to create playlists, uh, group lots of media files together and set the order in which they play. So if you wanted to make a com commercial break for, uh, say, a sports event or something while they're changing halves, then you'll be able to insert an entire playlist and just leave it run. To select the playlist, you literally just click that, and it will expand down, and it will show you over here what's playing at the time, and what comes next. You can shuffle the board around, you can get these to play once, play twice, loop twice, loop three times. You can preview them as well, which allows you to see exactly what's going on here. And you can throw them into the trash, you can mute them if you like. So that's your playlist function there. As you can see there's a lot going on in this playlist. Finally, we come to the replays part of the stream style, which is the most interesting part and will be most used to people who cover sports events. Um, now, this is something that you can get in other systems, but usually requires another operator to run it. Um, this is unique in the fact that it can be easily operated by just the one person who's taking control of the production switching normally, uh, and that person will have control of uh, the the replay duration and how fast or slow the replay plays back. Now the way that it works is quite interesting. Um, the replays are created. The replays are created over here in this section. Now short, medium, and long corresponds to the amount of time that the replay will be will be captured. Now this is fairly difficult to explain, but. Over here, if I go to my replay settings, we have the duration of which the the duration of the, the replays themselves. So, for a short replay length, we've got it set to five seconds. For a long replay, we've got it set to ten seconds. The medium, sorry, the stream start is always recording thirty seconds of each camera at all times. So it will be whatever is the last 30 seconds of action will be recorded on each camera. When the user goes in and selects a replay, here, short, medium or long, it will create a file that comes from that last recorded 30 seconds. So, say if, so, say if some action happened within the last 30 seconds, uh, you would be able to select and select uh, that last 30 seconds and capture files recording on each four of the cameras. So if a goal was scored in a football match and you were recording it, if you knew that that goal occurred within the last five seconds, you'd be able to click short here and that would be 
that was a paper file for the last five seconds on each camera. As you can see here, it's creating the replays. We can preview them all here. And then we can insert them here. And you can see my replays playing back here. Now, let me try and create a more interesting replay for you so it's easier to see. If I have some action here, uh, create some action here, create a medium replay, and as you can see here, it's created the files. This is the most recent replay. I can preview them here so you can see what's going on. You can see me dancing around there. And when I look, see one that I like, I can select it here. When I see one that I like, I can select it here. I can select it here. And the replay will play back. Now I can use the F and S buttons to speed it up with F and slow it down with S. Which means that you can easily fast forward to the bit of action that you want and slow it right down to get really in, like, close to what was going on. So, if uh, you're covering a football match, if a goal was scored, you select the appropriate replay length so that you've got uh, all of the action that happens. You create the playlist selecting... You create the replay selecting short, medium or long, depending on when the goal actually was scored. Um, and then it creates the files, you select which, which uh, camera feed you want the replay to play back from and it plays it back and you can speed it up and slow it down. In the settings down here, you can change the duration of the playback capture. So 5 seconds for a short replay, 10 seconds for a medium replay and 20 seconds for a long replay. This can be changed as well. We've got the default motion ratio here. So when it, when it plays back, it automatic, automatically plays back at 50%. If you hold down the S key while the replay is playing, you can set it to play back at 20% of the speed. Or if you hold down the F key, it will play back at 100% of the speed. You have the ability to move the replays up and down. And they'll be colour coded so you can see what's happening. It also gives you the time here that allows you to tell when in the in the production it was actually played back. Another really interesting thing about Streamstar is that it allows you to set up easy picture in picture modes. Uh, this means that you can put in a football match in the background and you can have the uh, studio commentators in the small picture in the corner. And you could have uh, an action replay playing play the small thing in the corner, or you could have a media file playing, or you could have a media file in the background and a live camera in the foreground. Um, this is easily set up here. In the top line here, we've got picture in picture mode. You select which picture in picture mode you want. Here's uh, one that was set up earlier. So if I go back and start a new one. Now, this is B, our background, and I will set that as this camera here. And in our foreground, I want this to play. And then all I have to do is hit go live. And we can see it playing back over here. If I set up our picture in picture mode over here, I can select picture in picture. I can select which picture in picture type I want. And I can say that. In the foreground here, I want one of the replays I made earlier, so I'll select that one there. And for this one here, I want this picture of me from a live camera feed. And all I have to do here is hit go live, and I have myself in the background here. And you'll be able to see the slow motion replay there, which you can slow down and speed up in the same way as before. If I wanted to set up a picture in picture with, <coughs> with myself, Sorry, let me show you here. Select B, which is the background part of it, and have my feed from camera two here. Uh, and I'll have in the foreground, I want to put in this media file down here. 
here somewhere. Where is it? Put it in this media file here. Hit go live. Take my DVI input off. And we can see here the video is playing back here. And that, that can be a video that was generated within the stream style. You can play back all of the playlists. Uh, you can play back uh, any FLV file that comes in. You can play back any VTs that you've made beforehand. Or you can even play back the, the program output that you've recorded through there if you'd like. A few bits more I want to show you about the settings down here. Here we've got the audio mixer here. This is my camera one, which is where my little lapel mic is plugged in. Camera two, camera three, camera four, which isn't plugged in at the moment. We've got our media input here, which I can zero by double clicking. You can also have an auxiliary input, which could be um, the mini jack input there, or you could have an external USB hard, uh, hardware interface if you'd like. There's also a line out there for any if you want to go into any sort of mixer or something like that. And you've got the headphone output for previewing the sounds. In the settings here, we've got the general settings which allow you to set a, uh, a second monitor output that you can have either the entire program output or a quad split or mixture of the two. Uh, you've got the language mode. Project directories is just where you'll find your files. NTSC and PAL mode. We've got the insert settings here which allow you to enable chroma keying on the DVI input. It allows you to select which logo input you want. Or you can select a group of overlays. Um, this allows you to select a folder that has multiple, say, scorecards in them and you can insert the scorecards onto the overlay input here. Also here I've got the replay settings, which I've shown you before. We've got the appearance here. Now this lets you set uh, borders for the picture-in-picture -picture modes. So if I were to go live on this picture-in-picture -picture here, you can see it's got a yellow background. And I can change that, make it a bit thicker, change the colour to black. And I can just go live and you can see it here it's got a black background. Same goes with the split screens, you've got the colour and thickness of the, of the borders between the split screens. We've got the background here and that will allow you to put in a background in case the signal is lost for whatever reason, which will never happen. Because it's a very robust system, we've had uh, this particular case was running for six days uh, before, before it came to us with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Um, also here we've got our audio settings which allow you to set the inputs and outputs from your hardware. We've got a bit about the uh, webcast case here. And finally we've got recording and streaming modes. At the moment I'm recording this. And streaming we've got a built-in flash media encoder here. Uh, we can stream to Wowza, Dacast, Ustream, Optoshape, Showcaster and this list is uh, getting bigger and bigger as we speak. Um, and the encoding profile here, which allows you to set um, where it's going and what uh, bitrate you're streaming at. Um, and there you have it. And over here, all I have to do is click close app or power off. This is the StreamStar webcast case, which is the ruggedized model that you're able to take on hand luggage on an aeroplane uh, in the handy case that we've got down here. Um, you can also have the the tower computer shaped uh, stream style webcast touch which comes in with a 23 inch widescreen touch screen uh, for control and there's the webcast 3U which is a 3U rack mounted uh, machine that comes again with a 23 inch widescreen touch screen panel uh, and all three of the models are available with or without slow motion replay uh, so that if you don't need it if you're only um, if you're only broadcasting sort of corporate content or something like that, there's probably no need to have replays. But this is really aimed at uh, sports uh, broadcast or web, sports webcast, um, and that's why they've built in slow motion. And I think it's a feature that you can't get anywhere else. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope it shows you a little bit more about how to use the case.